Hello again, friends. Welcome to my first ever Let's Play of Cardfight Vanguard Ride to Victory. My plan for this is to essentially get some of the older cards, build some of the older decks that I used to be known for, and explain a little bit about the metagame, how it changed, and kind of where the decks were at at around the time frame of set 9, which is when this game had its last set, and kind of explain how things function during that time frame. So, the way that I'm going to do that is, uh, of course, by grinding a crap ton, which may not be the most interesting thing in the world, so... Um, we'll, we'll see how uh, it's receptive for me to be doing the grinding portion of this on the Let's Play, but I feel like if I'm not also going through the process of showing you how I'm playing the game and things of that nature, it doesn't really feel like a Let's Play if I'm just doing highlights. So, that's kind of what my game plan is, is to just release the raw footage. Plus, you know, I'm lazy. You know me. I'm super lazy. So, we're going to go ahead and get started. So, I've already kind of decided my path for what I'm going to go for first. So, for those of you who know the $10 Hyper Budget Rush deck, we're going to go straight for that. And the reason why we're going to go straight for that is because Nova Grapplers have an extra booster that's just Nova Grappler specific. And it is very, very quick and easy to get 12 criticals with them. I think I can do it before I fight my first fight. And having a 12 critical deck to me is honestly going to be the most important thing for actually getting through this early grinding section of the game. So that's going to be game plan alpha. We'll see how that goes. So they're going to tell me what deck I should play based off of my decisions here. But since I can't read Moon Runes, I'm just going to... Hit random buttons and then tell them no, I want Nova Grappler. Unless they tell me I want Nova Grappler. <clears throat> there we go. So the big downside to this is that the only card... Actually, there isn't a single unique card in this trial deck. I'm literally just getting this to expedite just the triggers. Because even the boss cards are in the pack that I'm going to be getting. So, I'm kind of being a little bit silly about it, to be fair. Oh, well, I got an Asura Kaiser. I'll take it. It's actually really good. And I got some damage on flip, so I'll use the Asura Kaiser. <laughs> you don't have to ask me twice. So, we're going to go ahead and uh, get a booster box of Infinite Phantom Legion. Assuming it lets me. Oh, I thought that would take me here. There we go. So I can adjust the deck based off of what we got, but what I'm going to do is actually insert uh, all of the passwords. I'm just going to get that administrative stuff just done and out of the way. That way it, we don't have to deal with it later on. And there is some pretty good stuff in the uh, um, passwords. It's got a lot of uh, useful promos and stuff like that, so we're going to get that knocked out real quick. There's 27 of them, and it'll take me approximately two minutes. I'll probably give some commentary on the cards as we get them. So the first up are the Entranger cards. Uh, Kuroro Ezel, which is just a 12k attacker. Uh, Blaster Kuroro and Blaster Kuroro Dark, which do have Blaster in the name, and they were used for that purpose in some of the earlier Blaster decks. And they're just 11k attacking grade 2s with 8k base power. So, not the best cards in the world, but if you needed blaster units, they were there. <clears throat> so, next up is... Alfred Early. I don't think Alfred Early really ever saw any play. Uh, he just didn't have anything good. Plus, he contradicted a lot of the other cards that wanted Blaster Blade and Soul. Or that just wanted Soul in general. That's the Vanilla Blaster Blade, which is uh, Blaster Dark being rejected by the Blaster Blade, according to the original lore. Although, I feel like that's been retconned at least four times by now. We got some of the uh, manga art sleeves. Uh, the Triple Rare Blaster Blade Mat. Midnight Bunny. Uh, we got some um, minivan sleeves, which are always nice. Always really popular. And then I think we're going to get to the actual promo cards now. 
So first up we have, uh, I don't even remember what this card's name is, but it's uh, a clone of the um, Holy Disaster Dragon type, where if you discard a card as Vanguard it gets plus 6k when it attacks, and if you discard it as Rearguard it gets plus 3k when it attacks. The Dark Dictator has a miniature Soul Saver Dragon effect and then also has an Alfred effect. Not particularly great in comparison to other cards that could be played. No Life King Death Anchor, uh, because you can't use heal triggers and you have to be at 5 damage to have its primary effect activated, it's not really been super competitive, but it was nice to have an 11k unit, especially one that didn't have Lord. So it had advantages. Dragonic Waterfall was actually the boss of my Kage Royals build. I'm a big fan of that card. And these cards all got ridiculously stronger in the V-Series. Uh, this is a Gold Paladin promo. Uh, we actually got this, I think, in 2013. Uh, when it's called from deck, you can give two units on your board plus 2k. So, not exactly that useful, but honestly, not terrible either. Uh, Dragonic Executioner, plus 2k when it attacks a Vanguard. Uh, Daikingo, I think that was his name. He's uh, same as Holy Disaster Dragon, just for Gold Paladin. Cursed Lancer, really good card. On hit, on flip for Shadows. Benedict, uh, one of my favorite meme cards. It's not that the card needs to be a meme, because he does help you get those attacks in. But the way that I played him back in the day, like even before Tidal Assault was a thing, was I just stacked crits on him and buffed him up with a card called Battle Siren Neferly, which gives a grade 3 Aqua Force unit plus 3,000 power. So then he'd be able to hit over the crossrides and then have trigger power. And that was those would be crit triggers too, so it was just good old fun. Alt Art Soul Saver. I actually really like this Art of Soul Saver. We got Marhaz, another 12k attacker. Rumble Gun Dragon, the Dragon Monk Goku clone for Narukami. Exculpate the Blaster, and then the last three are the promos for this game, and then one mat after that. So, Dragonic Overlord's alt art for this game, which, honestly, I really like it. I think it's one of their better artworks. And then I wasn't a big fan of the weird way that they're holding the sword for this. So, that's the uh, alt art Blaster Blade. <clears throat> I don't mind this Blaster Dark one as much. I think it looks pretty cool. And then finally, the Platina Ezel Mat. And uh, there's a space there. Alright, there we go. So that is everything. And now that we have that out of the way, we won't have to do it again, which is good. Alrighty, so I have to fight Morikawa first. I didn't get any Nova Grappler cards, so we're going to have to suffer through this first fight. But once... Actually, you know what, I can just uh, bump up my Death Metal Droids. Gold Riddle isn't bad either, so let's make some adjustments here real quick. So we've got 9k attacker for Counter Blast 1. I think that's uh, pretty poopy. Queen of Sword, uh, we can bump up. Uh, don't mind you. Well, you're going to be my last pick if I put something in. Alright, let's go over here. So add in a Surakaiser. And then we'll add in... Play doll and Hungry Dumpty. And then we'll max you. So that's 13, that's perfect. King of Sword is maxed. We've got four of the 8k. And I believe this guy's the uh, Cursed Lancer clone. Yeah, he is. Alright, so that's fine. Obviously not as good as Hungry Dumpty, but still viable. Uh, I don't think we need Mr. Invincible. We don't need the soul for anything. So we're just going to go uh, Death Metal Dread. Brutal. And then we have space for one more card, and that should be a grade three. Uh, Sir Kaiser. See, it's kind of yeah. We'll just do we'll just do that. Uh, NG for Nova Grappler. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to slog through a game with only four crits, but. Um, the critical triggers are both commons out of the extra booster, so I should get a full play set of both of them by just buy, by just expending what resources I have on those, which I get to buy my first box after Morikawa. 
So, we just have to slog through this first fight and then we'll be good. Unfortunately, Morikawa only gives 250 VP, so you have to beat him 12 times to get a freaking box. So he's not the best thing to grind on. But we will work on uh, getting a deck that's going to be able to essentially pub stomp the uh, NPCs. Stand up! Bang up! So we got a pretty nice uh, spread of cards here in this hand. Unfortunately, I'm either going to have to use the Battle Riser or use Queen of Sword in the middle row, which I would prefer not to do. So I'm just going to use the Battle Riser. Go ahead and take a swing. Well, now it's looking like using the Queen of Sword would have been better. Oh, well. So, he has only got four grade twos in deck, and that was one of them. So, he may not actually be able to ride this following turn. We'll see. So back in the day, the way that I won a lot of my games was whenever my opponents would make a swing like this, I'd just drop a 10k since my decks typically don't need too many counter blasts. And that's one thing I was specifically built for, was to not need many counter blasts. So I would, uh, I would obviously try and avoid Limit Break if I could, um, at least in this meta. Because what you would notice is a lot of people would be suiciding to the point where they would try and go for getting out um, their limit breaks as soon as humanly possible, which wasn't really a good idea for several reasons, but predominantly for the fact that um, they were letting 5k to guard attacks just hit them in the face over and over and over again just to hit limit break, which was not really conducive to them winning the game. So I've been playing so much Zero that it's almost like instinctive for me to not want to boost. But I need to boost. Because uh, they can actually guard from hand here. Alrighty. So I don't think he's going to guard this one either. Unless he has a 10k. We'll see. So this is kind of what I was talking about. Where I I'm not saying that the AI is representative of the average Vanguard player. The lock on victory one, which is actually a worse AI than this one, is actually more representative of how bad the Vanguard players were at the time. And they would just let themselves... Uh, like, essentially, you could just write it as a program. If, like, uh, so the way that um, the upgraded Sentinels, the Limit Break Era Sentinels function, that's exactly how um, it would function if it was being played by a player in the Limit Break era of Vanguard, which is kind of sad, where they would only guard if the attack either killed them or um, if it was multiple crit. But then there was never a caveat in there for them to uh, deal with how do I word this? Um, there was never a caveat for them to deal with uh, the other issues that came with uh, just not having cards in hand. Okay, this is actually magic numbers, and that's hilarious. One of the fun things about this trial deck was that 
you could essentially just have Death Metal Droid be free by doing this particular combo. That or they had to guard it, which was still pretty useful. And you can see already now he's one to passing, which means if I hit a crit I win, but not likely since I'm having rainbow triggers here, but it is funny just to see how quickly him not guarding her. Well, I guess that's not really fair in this situation because Morikawa doesn't have cards to guard with since he has 21 grade threes. But if he did, he still wouldn't guard, and that's the problem. It's not even really that fun playing against the person who just doesn't ride up. Oh no, I'm having stride flashbacks. Well, I will say this. Playing the decks from 2013 in 2021, when you've had to deal with both Zero changing what these cards mean in your brain, and you have to deal with V having updated versions of these cards, and also dealing with uh, those same cards having different shield values. <laughs> It's a little bit confusing, I'm not going to lie. More confusing than I uh, thought it would be at first. Let's go this route. We don't need to use the power up. Alright, we got our first win. So now we can actually adjust the deck a little bit. Um, after that, uh, so Brutal Jack is in the extra booster, so once we have four of those, we should be good to just uh, go to the extra booster one and get Cat Butlers. So I'll be able to do the $10, uh, the $10 deck. I think that uh, Nova's only have 12 crits, but that's still going to be good enough for now. So, oh, there we go. This should definitely get me up to 12 grids, which is going to be a great starting point here. So, we'll double check what we got. Okay. So, essentially, these are my boss cards from the trial deck, and that's what I primarily got for grade threes. We also got Shubelia, which honestly, honestly, I think I'm going to make Shubelia my boss. Uh, she's got the same skill as uh, Master Fraud. When she's boosted by a Nova Grappler, she gets plus 3k, which is going to be useful. Because if you stick Tough Boy behind her, that's 21k. And then if she hits either Vanguard or Rearguard, then you can Soul Blast 3 and draw a card, which is also incredibly useful. Ooh, got an SP Riser. Got a Kirara. Oh, we already have all the Brutal Jacks we need. So I think that from here, we're honestly already good to just build Cat, Butler, Brutal Jack. Um, there's a few different variations of it that I could build. Um, there's a Death Army version, which I'm probably going to go for, which means I may need some more of the Death Army cards. Well, actually, Rook is honestly the better one. Although, I could probably stand to have a few more ladies. It's so strange. These are all rares, right? Yeah, so I just got six Brutal Jacks. <laughs> okay. But if I got six regular rares, there's no way I didn't get the crits. So that's good news, at least. Death Army guy, we got three of. Ooh, we got two Twin Bladers, so that's going to be useful too. So we'll at least have the ability to drop some PGs too. Dancing Wolf is pretty useful. Got the High Powered Riser Customs. And this at least gives us starters too. And being able to push back a starter is going to be great. So we got enough crits from the Minimum Risers. And enough crits from the uh, Red Lightnings. We've got both tur turbo and battle risers. And we got the better heal trigger. Yeah, so we should uh, effectively be good to go. So let's go ahead and back out. So before we fight Izaki, I'm going to go ahead and update the deck with what we just got. 
So, looks like my master plan to build 12 crit face Nova Grapplers was uh, a success. Alrighty, so, we'll do it from here. Don't think we're going to be using Gold Rudel. Let's do this. Haven't decided how I'm going to do that row yet. Don't know if I'm keeping you yet. And get rid of everything except for crits and heals. Alright. So then, add these crits. Oh yeah, add better heals. That's right. And add minimum risers. And then for starter, uh, Death Army is probably going to be the one I end up using anyway, so we'll do that. Alright, so then got four tough boys and four queen of sword. Let's go ahead and add two uh, twin blader. Yeah, I'll add the death army guy. Thought process there being that if I do uh, transition this deck, it's going to be into that type of deck anyway. So, not necessarily... Ready for that yet? Do a Kirara, do you. That puts us at 10. So we've only got 8 spaces left, that's going to be for grade 3s. So then. Obviously, keep a Surakaiser. So, 4 Shubelia. And with Shubelia, I could run Mr. Invincible just to. Pump up the soul a little bit. Does anything else pump up the soul? Red Lightning does. Well, that's the counter charge. Alright, so then, yeah, I'll run Mr. Invincible. That seems pretty good. So then, Mr. Invincible. Uh, actually, all three of them would be decent vanguards. And this one's uh, power boost is only on vanguard, I believe. Oh. Yeah, it's only on Vanguard. But I mean, even then, that's still pretty good. Alright, so set you as starter, which I believe is this button. No. This button. This button. I know which button it is on the actual game. There we go. Okay, it's just that button. Okay. Awesome. So, with 12 crits and a lot better offensive cards, that should work out a little bit better. The only uh, downside this deck has against other decks that I've played is that I have to take one damage early to make sure that I have uh, Brutal Jack Live, which is the tiniest of differences. Oh man, having 12 crits already is just going to be amazing. For those of you who have uh, actually seen my blog posts where I talk about like the chances of hitting triggers, the odds of hitting a uh, crit trigger with 12 in deck versus 4 in deck is astronomically different. That is a terrible opening hand. Let's uh, try that again. Stand up. Still not great. Oh man. Oh, we could be in trouble already. <laughs> yeah, I usually like to do 13, 11, 9. But I ended up doing uh, 14, 10, 9. And of course, the grade that I'm missing is a grade 2. So Tachikaze doesn't really have anything going for it in the earlier sets. So I'm just going to deal with it for now. So ideally, uh, we draw into a grade 2. Because if we don't, we're actually in quite a bit of trouble, to be honest. Uh, well... 
Time to see if I can win this uphill battle. Good. Good. Tyrant Death Rex is a fun card. Um, well, if he doesn't hit a trigger, I could get an extra damage out of that. Wow. So let's see how bad he is, because if he doesn't guard this one, he's just stupid. Yeah, like, if you can drop a 5k shield to stop an entire damage, like, he doesn't have a single limit break card in his deck. He doesn't need that damage. Teth Death Rex doesn't cost any counter blasts. Uh, the other card he has is um, Giga Rex, which is an awful card. There's no reason for him to be doing what he's doing. It doesn't make any sense. Well, I guess he found his grade twos. In this case, I only have one card I can even guard with. So I'm just gonna have to eat it. Nice. Alright, so he's out of moves this turn. So I'm still way up in the damage department. As long as I don't draw a three, I should be able to stabilize, I hope. So I actually have a YouTube video about this called the, uh, what was it, The Man's Guide to Gradelock? Yeah, it's time to call me some triggers and bonk some heads. Alrighty. Hey, that's a great one. That is not what I needed to see right now. <laughs> Uh, he's got replacements for these vacuum mammoths, so even if I attack into him, it's not really going to do anything. I'll get rid of him anyway. Yeah, I don't have a choice but to eat it. At this point, I'm just gonna eat it. If he hits a crit, I won't be able to stop the other attack from hitting my face anyway. This at least gives me a chance to conserve card advantage and hopefully hit a trigger here. I found a great two. Remember back before G Assist was a thing? Those were good times. Although going by this information, I probably wouldn't have hit the G Assist anyway. Alright, time to uh, get my grade two. Oh. The positivity was there. Reality just didn't have my back. <laughs> uh, let's uh, flounder some more, I guess. <sighs> so I have nine grade twos left in my deck. We'll see. I'm a little bit worried about dealing more damage because I still need him to... Oh, I still may need to heal, rather, I guess is the better way to word that. Wow, he dropped two cards for that. I am okay with this. I think 
I'm just gonna stop the two side attacks this turn. Got him. Oh yeah, time to farm some VP with my 12 crit deck. This is the worst let's play that's ever happened. Hey, there's a great two. I could still win if I got Brutal Jack. Okay. So you're telling me there's a chance. Now his units aren't going to be able to hit mine. Excuse me. Mild Edge. And he has to hand dump now, which is also good. Two to pass. And based off of what I saw from his hand before, I think he's going to have to dump two cards to stop this one as well, which is good. Oh, perfect guard, that's right. Okay, so then I have perfect guard and 10k shield. So he'd have to hit two trick. Never mind. He has to hit one trigger to kill me. No whammies. Good. Those are two grade threes. That's also really good. He has no intercepts on the board, so he's going to attack into my minimum riser, which is fine because I have enough grade threes to completely refield. Okay, so now the question is do I ride Shubelia to hit 21 and guarantee that my Vanguard's going to hit? Or do I ride Mr. Invincible to get the card draw in case something goes south? Uh, I'm gonna ride Shubelia, actually. Alright, we'll poke with Invincible. And then he's going to have to drop 10k to 1 to pass, and he'll still need another card in hand to be able to stop the other one. So we're still in a pretty good spot here. I think we got it this turn. And then a crit for good measure. Right here. Bet y'all didn't know I have me some Saqualamia. I had to work way too freaking hard for that game. <laughs> so I'm going to pick this up a little bit later, but I think that that's where I'm going to have to stop this for right now. Um, to give you some insight as to what the next game plan is going to be, when you fight Miwa over here, he has trial decks that he will fight against you with, and if you beat him, you can unlock the trial deck. So that's going to be uh, one thing that we're going to do to try and unlock other cards because we went the Nova Grappler route and every single Nova Grappler card in that trial deck exists in some other set, which is a bit unfortunate, but I was trying to turbo that 12 crit so that I could turbo the VP farm. 
that did not work out, as you can all see. Uh, but we still managed to pull out that win against Izaki, so we'll see how that goes. Um, I think that we're going to call it quits for now, uh, and I'm going to upload this one. So I will see you guys next time.